Well, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to my talk. Um, we'll talk about uh, a recent journey that I went on and its goals about bringing some cool NLP stuff to Apache in Open NLP, uh, and then an example of using it from uh, Apache Solar. Uh, so my name is Jeff Zimrick. Uh, I'm a search relevance engineer at Open Source Connections. Uh, we do uh, work around um, improving search relevance for organizations. Uh, so uh, if your search results aren't good and your customers aren't happy, uh, get in touch with us. Um, I'm also the current chair of the Apache Open NLP project. Um, so you can kind of see where my motivation for this comes from in uh, improving uh, Apache Open NLP, but also trying to improve search relevance uh, through Apache Solar uh, as well. Uh, please get in touch um, if you're interested in this stuff. I would love to talk to you. Uh, and collaborate. So uh, on Twitter or LinkedIn, um, I'm happy to meet new people. Uh, open Source Connections, where I work, um, a shout out about what we do. Uh, we empower the world search teams, um, host the relevant Slack, um, about 2,600 people in there right now talking everything about search. So if you like search, um, it's a really good resource. We just wrapped up our Haystack conference um, not too long ago in April. It was a lot of fun in Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, so everything search, uh, check it out. And we're hiring if you're interested. Uh, so first, Apache Open NLP. Um, in case you're not real familiar with it, um, it's been around for uh, 12, 13 years now. Uh, I joined the Apache ecosystem around 2010 or 11. Um, and it's, it's got a lot of capabilities, uh, NLP stuff, tokenization, document classification, name entity. Uh, so a lot of things that you hear about um, in more of the modern Python type stuff um, has been there in Apache Open NLP uh, for a while. And in case you're new to it, um, Apache Open NLP is Java. Um, so um, can use it um, outside that, that Python um, stuff. It's lightweight. Um, it has no dependencies, like literally no dependencies. Um, the, the Maven dependency, I think it does, depends on um, Nothing, there's nothing there. Even the, the recent log4j stuff, we weren't affected um, because no dependencies on log4j. So uh, you, can, you can bring it in without a lot of worries uh, around dependencies. Now it uses Perceptron Learning, which is just a uh, one layer neural network um, and CPU only. Uh, it, it trains and runs fast on CPUs, so you don't need GPUs um, and, and some of the other stuff that more uh, modern and, and things that you hear about more uh, require. I have a lot of stickers. If anybody would like a sticker, they look really good on your laptop. Uh, please come, come get one afterward, talk to me. You don't have to talk to me, you can take a sticker <laughs> without talking to me. Uh, but I do have stickers. Uh, so the relationship between OpenNLP, uh, Apache uh, Lucene and Apache Solar uh, is like this. Uh, solar depends on Lucene for pretty much everything. Um, if you're um, not new to search, I'm sure that you're probably already well aware of that. Um, you might not know that Apache Lucene actually um, has a dependency on open NLP. Uh, some of the uh, NLP stuff in the Lucene Analyzers uh, project uh, depends on open NLP uh, to perform um, entity extraction uh, and some other operations in there. So that's the hierarchy. Um, of what we're working with. Uh, so some history uh, about how far back these things go. Uh, Open NLP started on SourceForge in 2002, so much longer than I said, about 20 years then. Uh, in 2010, it joined the Apache Incubator uh, as a project. Um, and in 2011, there was a ticket, uh, Lucene 2899, that was opened uh, to bring in Open NLP's integration into Lucene. And if we skip forward six years, uh, to 2017, we can see that that ticket got resolved in, in six years, right? And it's, uh, imagine working someplace and you had your ticket there for six years and just kept saying, next sprint, next sprint, next sprint, you know? But, you know, that's open source for you, right? Things change, we're all volunteers. Um, but in six years, that uh, ticket got done and OpenNLP was integrated into Lucene. With that done, things can start rolling a little bit faster. Uh, in 2018, uh, Solar 7.3 came out, and it included that functionality that Lucene now exposed. So now in Solar, there was a new Open NLP update processor. So we could do some of that named entity recognition uh, stuff inside of our Solar ingest. So we had a lot of new capabilities, really exciting there. And then I, I put a green box. 
all kinds of NLP fun stuff. If you've been around NLP, you know, between the years of 2018 and today, it just kind of went insane. Everything changed. There was so much new stuff. Um, Java, you know, kind of got pushed to the side. The new Python, cool stuff, shiny things came rolling in. Um, and the NLP world just kind of turned on its head. It went from being um, something that was very niche, that uh, you didn't use a lot, to now it's used every day. And, and you, can't, you can't avoid it, <laughs> even if you try to. Uh, so today in 2022, earlier this year, uh, the project released OpenNLP 2.0. So the first um, major release since Apache opened NLP um, about 11 years ago. So 11 years, um, we finally released version 2.0, our second major release. And in this release, we brought in some really cool stuff. So what's changed? Everything changed uh, in, in, in NLP. Um, and, and for me, as a, as a person with a Java background, um, you know, to bring in new NLP stuff, it, it all went to Python. You kind of felt left behind. Bring the two things together was kind of um, a mess. But PyTorch, um, all those cool things over there, we kind of had to use it. We kind of had to learn it. But there's still a lot of applications for Java in the NLP world. So in Apache Open NLP uh, 2.0, uh, the goal is to modernize Apache Open NLP. Um, I don't believe that Java developers and the Java ecosystem should have to go out to Python. Nothing against Python. Love it. It's great. Um, but I don't think we should have to jump through hurdles to get things working. Uh, so the goal here for uh, 2.0 and its initial release is to bring it into the future uh, so that um, it's just easier to use. So open NLP on the left um, with Java and its Perceptron algorithm. Um, I like to think of it as a very dependable late 80s, early 90s pickup truck. You know, it's the kind of truck that you go out, it's probably going to start, unless you know, the battery's dead or something crazy. It's probably going to start, you know it's going to run, you know exactly how it's going to do. It's your workhorse, right? And then over on the right side, we have the Hugging Face Transformers library in Python. And it's got its neural networks that are super deep, complicated and I'd like to think of it as a rocket ship. Um, we, are, we are just, everything's moving quickly. Um, there's a lot more stuff to learn about putting a rocket ship uh, in the space. Um, we all might not be able to go out and just use a rocket ship. We all know how to use uh, an old 1990s truck. So that's just kind of how I think of it in my head. So I, I want to, to bring those things together uh, a little bit. And I want to have OpenNLP be able to use the Hugging Face uh, Transformers ecosystem, those models uh, and the, the, the deep neural networks and everything, um, and turn OpenNLP, uh, maybe not turn it into a rocket ship, but make it more like a rocket ship. I want to give it the rocket ship power without the rocket ship complexity. So um, if you're familiar with NLP in the past uh, couple of years, you've probably used Hugging Face Transformers. Um, and, and all of the models up there, perhaps you've trained your, your own. Uh, it's a lot of fun. If you haven't, I encourage you to, to, to give it a spin, try it out, see how things go. Um, and so we have all of these wonderful models that the community uh, has made available to us up on the Hugging Face Hub. And here we are over in OpenNLP, and we kind of look at these models. If, if you're like me and you look at them, and you just kind of, uh, you just kind of salivate. All these models are up there and you, you can't use them and you want to use them. Uh, so uh, let's make it so that we can use these models from uh, Java, Apache Open, and LP. Uh, so how do we do this? We, we have to have some bridge between the Python ecosystem and the Java-based Apache Open, and LP. And this was a project, um, just a, a research project that uh, last year I got interested in, is what is out there that can build this bridge? Um, it turns out there's, there's, there's a few things that can help you build that bridge between them. Um, some are, um, require more work than others. Um, some, some were promising, not quite there yet. But what I found uh, was really promising and works today is the Onyx runtime. So, um, it's um, uh, an open standard um, that uh, defines models, how they can be used, how they can be stored, 
uh, and transmit it. So using the Onyx runtime, we are able to build that bridge between the Python ecosystem models and the Apache Open NLP Java land. So uh, here is a command on, on this slide here, a Python command using the Hugging Face Transformers library to take a model, um, the NLP Town BERT based multilingual uncased cinema. We like long names, I, I guess, in the NLP land. And we're going to take this model straight off the Hugging Face hub that we last saw in the last slide. And we tell it what kind of model it is sequence, classification, and then we give it a name. And we hit enter. And this command goes out, it downloads that model for us, um, it converts it from PyTorch, whatever trained it, into an Onyx model. So now we have an Onyx model, um, and we want to bring that Onyx model over and make it usable from Apache Open NLP. So we're going to take that Onyx model, now we have our deep, crazy, complex neural networks, and so now we turn our 1980s truck into like the fastest land semi whatever that thing is um, on earth so we have a truck but it's it's powered by <laughs> powered by rockets right uh, so that's what we're going to do so we have our onyx model great how do we use it what do we what do we do with it you know i, I can't just uh, um, say hey onyx model do stuff you know it doesn't quite work like that um, luckily there is a really cool tool out there called netron um, if you're familiar with it, you, you probably know how awesome it is. If you're not familiar with it and you're, you kind of work in this space, I uh, highly encourage you to go check out Netron. What it allows you to do is you can open up your Onyx model and it will show you the uh, inputs and outputs and what the model looks like. So here on this screenshot, uh, when I opened the uh, model that I converted, um, you'll see up there that it has inputs and outputs. And that is the very, very, very important information that we're looking for uh, here. The inputs. How do we call this model? What do we need to give it um, in order to get stuff back? And then the outputs. How does the outputs um, come back to us? Uh, so let's back up one more. So we can see on the inputs here, uh, there are three things listed. The input underscore IDs the attention underscore mask, and the token underscore type underscore IDs. Um, and then the outputs are the legits. And it tells you the data structures that they are. Um, integer arrays, and the last one, the outputs, uh, are float arrays. So that right there is that golden information. With this, we can now uh, load up our Onyx model in Java, and we can make calls straight to it. Um, we notice at the bottom on the outputs over here, I circled it in red, uh, the Netron app is telling us that the output array is of length 9. It is a uh, float array um, of length 9. And we think about where does that 9 come from? Uh, if you open up a different model, it's probably going to be a different number. 9 corresponds to the labels that were in the model when it was trained. So for this one, this is a named entity recognition model. And you know when you train a named uh, entity recognition model, you tell it what things are. Is it a person? Is it a place? Is it an organization? Um, so the labels here are in the bottom in the chart. Uh, the first one, zero, O, whatever you want to call it, probably O, means outer, means nothing. It's not an entity. It's not what we're looking for. Uh, then you have uh, B, miscellaneous, so before miscellaneous. Um, I, inner miscellaneous, B, person, I, person. Uh, so you have before person, inner person. So using those labels, you can say what an entity is in a piece of text. Um, so if you saw my name, Jeff Zimmerick, you would say Jeff, B, per, before person. Uh, my last name, Zimmerick, I, inner person. So that right there is your label for the entity. So the number in the, le the legit, the output, the nine, corresponds to each of those labels. So you're, you're probably ahead of me here and you're probably already thinking ahead um, and you're probably thinking, oh sure, so then that makes sense that each of those values in that array that comes out corresponds to the probability that that token is um, that label. And you're right, that's exactly how it works. Um, so to know what those labels are, you have to know how the model was trained. Luckily, um, on the Hugging Face repo, if you go pull up that model, 
there will be a file, labels. Sometimes people are nice and they put it right in the README for you and you don't have to dig for it. Just find it. You just have to know what those labels were, how the model was trained, and that will tell you the probabilities that come out in the outputs. What I just said about the labels being in the model config, and this one here, um, this is in the config.json file that was used um, in training the model. Um, over here on the left in the JSON, you can see the, the nine labels. Um, and so that's how you know, oh, on well, my model output, sure. Um, I'm ex I expect to see a float array with length nine um, with each one of those corresponding to the index given here uh, in the JSON. Uh, this format's referred to the IOB or BIO format, inside, outside, beginning, uh, for the, the label tags. Uh, you'll see it in, uh, in NLP stuff everywhere. So now let's call the inputs to the model. Um, we, we need to wire up our code. So we know what the model is giving us back. It's giving us back an array of some length that corresponds to our labels with probabilities. So how do we call the model? We saw earlier that Netron was telling us that it's expecting three inputs. Input IDs, attention mask, and token type IDs. So what are these things? What's it looking for? The input IDs is an array. That it is where each, um, each element of this array uh, is the value of that token from the model's vocabulary. So whenever a model uh, is trained up on Hugging Face, there'll be a vocab.txt, might be named something different. It contains the model's vocabulary. And in that vocabulary, uh, each token in the model has um, a value with it. These numbers I just made up for illustration. Um, but what we want to do is, is the model expects that type of input. The model doesn't understand words. It understands um, uh, IDs from the vocab file. So if this were a sentence, uh, we would go for each word in that sentence. Um, if it was, I'm having a great day, then we would say, okay, our first word is I. Let's go to the vocab uh, text file, find the value for I, and put it in our array to be passed. We would do that for each of the tokens in there. So just a little bit of, of work to, to fill up that input array. The attention mask uh, is, uh, luckily, it's, it's easier. Uh, so the attention mask um, just says it's a one-hot encoding for the tokens we want to consider. Uh, so in this example, we're giving, it a, we're giving the model a sentence, and we want to find the uh, named entities in that sentence. Uh, so we give every token a one. That just means let's consider every token in there. Um, if there's tokens you don't want to consider, uh, then those values are just zero, uh, and the, the model won't consider that. In all practical purposes, um, your attention mass will probably always just be one, unless you have a reason not to. Uh, for the token type IDs, um, they're used to separate sentences in the input. So uh, you can think if you're doing multiple sentences or a document, there's got to be some way to tell the model when a sentence uh, starts and stops. Um, for this example, just doing a single sentence, um, and so every uh, word in there has just the value one. Uh, the next sentence will be zero, 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 one, 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 uh, and so forth. And then our outputs uh, from the model. So, so we wired up those three uh, arrays. We have them ready to be passed to the model. The model is getting, um, uh, just to summarize, the model is getting uh, the input IDs for each token. Um, and the model is doing its black box work, right? Like models do best. Uh, and then the output, there's our um, array there with our, with our float values in it, um, and it's made up, completely made up numbers. Uh, but for each token uh, in the input, we'll have this array, um, and we can look at that array and then figure out what the model's telling us. So in this example, uh, the sentence, George Washington was president. Uh, the inputs uh, corresponded um, to uh, George148, 51 uh, is the ID of the token in the vocab file. Uh, Washington 10749. The numbers will vary between models. It's not important. Um, don't don't worry about specific numbers. I kind of just made these up <laughs> for this example. Um, attention mask and token type IDs both one. 
So there's our inputs, and now let's look at our outputs. Um, so for each token George Washington was president, we get back that array um, with, with length nine. Uh, so for our token George, um, our first one 1.459, 0 0.484, and, and so forth across there. Washington's got its index, or its um, uh, integer array of length nine was same, president um, the same. And down at the bottom, uh, we have our labels. Um, so if we look and find the highest value uh, for each token in those arrays, it will tell us um, what, what entities are in that sentence. So in this example, uh, 3.447 is the highest value, the highest probability, and it corresponds to the before person tag. So the model is telling us here that George is the start of a named entity. And like, oh, cool, all right, makes sense, right? Um, and so then we look at the next token, Washington. 3.424 is the, the highest value. Well, that corresponds to the inner person label. Excellent, so what's the model telling us? It's telling us that George Washington um, is a named entity in this sentence. Great, it's exactly what we would expect. Um, the next one was um, the highest value, or the next token was. Um, the value is 3.497 is the highest. That corresponds to the label O for outer. So it's saying it doesn't think that this token um, is a person, place, or thing, or whatever the labels might be. And same for president. Uh, 4.197 is the highest value, also corresponding to O. So it's also not a token or not uh, an entity. So in this example, um, the model is saying George Washington is our named person entity in here, and the other two tokens, was and president, are not named entities. So what we have done, uh, what I have described, is we have taken the Apache Open NLP from the Java ecosystem. We took a model that was trained in PyTorch um, through the Hugging Face Transformers library. We converted that model to the Onyx runtime, and then we used the super cool, awesome uh, Netron app to figure out our inputs and outputs to that model um, and let the model do its uh, fancy neural network stuff to figure out that George Washington is a named person. So now let's look at some Java code. So let's look at the code um, for which um, just ran through there on, on those fun arrays and things. It's remarkably simple, which is fantastic for people like me writing the code, right? Uh, so the inputs to the model, um, we saw in our Netron app exactly what they were. Um, so we're looking for um, a map, a string onyx tensor, we'll call it inputs, because I'm a very um, non-creative person. And in this inputs, we will put our input IDs, attention mask, and token type IDs. Um, and it's just a matter of wrapping them up into what the Onyx runtime uh, expects. Um, you'll see on the input IDs line over on the far right, there is a call tokens.getIDs. Um, and so that is just asking the vocabulary for, hey, what's the ID for the tokens? Um, attention mask, same thing, tokens.getMask is just returning an array of one. Um, and token type IDs is the same thing. Uh, you can see it. It's making a new long array, um, the length of the tokens, where each value um, is one. So now uh, we can send those inputs over to the model and um, get our outputs. Uh, so uh, we just say on our Onyx runtime, session.run, give it the inputs, get the outputs, the value. The value comes back as a three-dimensional uh, float array. Um, the third dimension is uh, the one that we're interested in because that's that array that we saw that's got the values in it. Um, and so we just go through those values like we did on that last slide. Um, pick them out. What's the, the greatest uh, one for uh, each label? So that was fantastic, right? So that was done in a, um, um, a sandbox, terrible, written up code, you know, proof of concept type work. Now, let's do the fun part. Let's integrate into Apache OpenNLP uh, so we can um, get, you know, let the community use it. So OpenNLP has some interfaces for these things. Uh, Token Name Finder is the interface uh, here from the Java docs uh, for named entity recognition. Well, wouldn't it be fantastic if we could just integrate that Onyx runtime code right there inside 
of the OpenNLP interfaces. That way, places that already use this, um, like Lucene or other applications out there in the world that use OpenNLP, um, they won't really need big changes, right? Code to the interface makes everybody's life easier. Um, so let's just create new implementations of these interfaces um, and use our Onyx runtime. One really, really, really cool thing that I really, really want to stress is, um, yes, of course, I'm a big Java fan just because I'm a Java engineer. Um, that's all. There's some really cool stuff um, over in the Python world, and I have absolutely nothing against the Python world. It's a really cool world, too. Um, one thing that you, you might have noticed here is that the model training does not happen inside of OpenNLP. We still have to do the model training. I shouldn't say staff. We still get to do the model training um, over in our favorite PyTorch TensorFlow worlds. Um, so this just gives you another avenue for using that model outside of the Python ecosystem. So we still get to train our models in PyTorch TensorFlow using uh, transformers, convert it to Onyx, and then use it from Java. Um, there are different types of models in OpenNLP, the Perceptron I mentioned earlier, that you can train from within OpenNLP. But I just want to highlight um, here that it, it's really important to remember that all of the model training here still happens over in the Python ecosystem, over in the PyTorch TensorFlow world. So um, I, I, think it's, I think it's really good to, to bring these two ecosystems together, the Java NLP ecosystem, merge it with the Python NLP e ecosystem um, instead of duplicating work and, and, and all of that nonsense. Um, so. So now, we have it wired up in OpenNLP. You know, we, we want to make it available to our downstream applications um, as well. So let's go look at Lucene. Maybe it won't take six years this time, right? Uh, so we look and find our integration point. Um, in Lucene, uh, in the analyzers, there's an OpenNLP uh, module. Excellent. Um, so that's our integration point there in, in uh, Lucene. Um, this work um, is still actively ongoing. If you're interested in Lucene and would like to help me um, get this nice and tidied up for a pull request, super be awesome. <laughs> really appreciate it. So we can beat that six-year record uh, from last time. Just get in touch with me. But that's where this will be. Um, and so once it's in there, anything that uses Lucene, which Apache Solar, um, Elasticsearch, uh, Amazon OpenSearch, you know, it makes it available to all of those downstream applications um, as well. Uh, inside of Lucene, uh, in that module, there's a class called NLP NER Tagger Op. Great name, right? Probably might be why it took six years. Got confused. Uh, so this is where we'll do that implementation um, in there. So now let's assume that it is um, uh, in Lucene, ready to go. Let's use it from solar. Uh, my background, my current job is helping people um, tune their search, make better search relevance, right? So one thing in that toolbox uh, for helping uh, people improve search results is named entities. You know, if you're searching for people, uh, if you're searching for things, um, having some awareness in Apache Solar of those people and things can do a great deal to your search relevance. Um, so that's part of my motivation, is let's get this in here um, so that we can use it from Solar. So let's take a look at how we can uh, potentially use that. So in this example here, um, this is a uh, update processor factory in Solar. And what we're doing here is we are um, we just call it onyx OpenNLP. Terrible for names, but hey, it works, right? Um, and we are calling our, we are referencing a processor class in Solar that I added called the OpenNLP.cat update processor factory. We like long names again. Um, and so what this update processor factory does is it performs document classification um, given some text. So um, when I say document classification for this one, you can think sentiment analysis. Uh, the example here is taking in uh, movie reviews um, and predicting if they are um, positive or negative. Uh, that's what this document classification model is doing. We could have also done named entity recognition um, the exact same way. Those are the two 
um, functionalities of OpenNLP that are currently implemented for Onyx, name entity recognition and document classification. Uh, the goal being to um, expand that uh, and, and, and keep going. So our inputs to this update processor factory, the model file, the path to our Onyx model, the vocab file, remember it was important, right? Um, so our path to those two things, um, source, the source and dest, destination um, things here. Source is saying in my input document that I'm indexing in solar, what field do I want to do my classification on? Now let's do it on the overview field. So we're, we're taking um, uh, movies, sorry, not movie reviews, we're taking movies and we're taking the overview of that movie. Think, you know, you go on IMDB and you read the overview and we're going to predict whether that movie is, is good or bad, document classification. Um, and then in the destination, we are going to put the value into a new field in this solar document called onyx underscore classification. And so that's it. So you wire this thing up into solar um, and you're ready to go. And it would have helped if I just would have uh, had that up there as well. So the model, uh, the vocab file, uh, the schema field that we want to do the classification on, and the destination schema field, which will hold our predicted uh, rating. So here it is uh, wrapped up. So in the, uh, the middle one, uh, the top is what we just saw. In the middle uh, black bar of code there, uh, this is the, uh, the solar field um, named Onyx classification that we referenced at top. Uh, type string, index true, typical solar uh, field stuff. Um, but what happens is after we start in indexing some documents in the solar here, um, we have, we can, if we look at, look at our documents, we do a search, we'll see this new Onyx classification field and we will see that it has some sentiment on it. Uh, very bad, uh, for example, for this one. Uh, interestingly enough, horror movies gave back bad and very bad and pretty much all other movies were, were like good. So <laughs> apparently the, the, the sentiment uh, on uh, a description of a horror movie is, is not great. Just fun fact uh, there. Um, so, uh, so there is our classification of very bad um, for, for this movie. And so what we did, so thinking about wrapping up, what we did here is that we exposed the Hugging Face model in, in PyTorch to Java through OpenNLP, through Lucene, uh, and now we can use it through Solar. And we are able to execute a state-of-the-art uh, sentiment uh, uh, model in our Apache Solar pipeline. So um, I said before, you can also do named entity recognition. So we could have easily uh, changed our processor factory up there to named entity and pulled out the entities and put them into a field to make them searchable uh, as well. How to help. Um, the projects, uh, OpenNLP, Lucene Solar, they're all Apache projects, of course. Um, I'm the chair of o OpenNLP. Love to have your help, everybody's help. Um, no matter how trivial or how beginner you are, I will be glad to help you um, get started and, and contribute. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and there, there, honestly, there's a lot of work to do, and it's a lot of good work. Uh, I want to, um, I, I personally feel like there is a huge gap um, in some of the NLP stuff uh, that's in solar like this, and I think this is a great way um, to, uh, to address that gap, and, and also not just solar. Uh, but looking forward um, into things like uh, open search. Um, we, can, we can certainly um, tackle that next, uh, bring this capability on out. So the next steps here is to finalize these integrations uh, with Lucene and Solar, uh, implement those other uh, interfaces, language detection, parts of speech, all kinds of good stuff there um, that we can use our Onyx models for. And lastly, of course, the, the stuff that's not fun um, but to document and make it examples available um, so people can get started and use it. Um, thank you all uh, for coming. Um, I'm really passionate about this, so it's great to talk about it. Um, the code for this repo is up there on my GitHub. Um, it works. <laughs> it does work. Uh, you can run it. Um, it will use that model. You will get um, the, uh, the field there, um, and you can kind of see where I'm going with it. Um, uh, moving forward. Um, the readme in that re repo um, has links to all the other uh, repositories and stuff. So if you just follow that readme, um, you'll have this up and, up and running. Um, runs in um, 
container, so it shouldn't be any trouble getting started. Um, the Lucene ticket, uh, uh, 10621 is uh, the one I created to, uh, imp to integrate the new OpenNLP 2.0 stuff in there. Uh, so if you want to uh, uh, take a look at that or keep your eye on that one, uh, hopefully, you know, don't check back in six years. Hopefully we'll have it done, you know, <laughs> a lot sooner. Um, but yeah, uh, so thanks a lot. I uh, appreciate you coming. If there's any questions, I'm happy to, uh, to chat. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so the question was, um, are, is there any performance hit by converting the model from Python to Onyx? So have you used? Yes. I'm not an expert in the Onyx runtime, um, but I think they say that there are that the Onyx runtime adds improvements to it, and in in, um, in 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 some of the technologies through um, like like uh, Apache TVM and others where the model is optimized in that process. Um, so I, I I don't think there's a performance hit there. Um, on the other part of the side of use of calling that model from Java, I really couldn't say. Um, you're, you're, you're going exactly where I've been going in uh, making benchmarks. Um, I have another pro uh, project um, repo up on my GitHub. You'll see it up there. It is Apache OpenLP benchmarks where I'm, I'm doing, I think, pretty much what you're saying. Uh, I want to take models that were trained in PyTorch, um, evaluate the performance um, there, and then do the, kind of the same thing, the analog open in, in open NLP. Um, and per performance um, in terms of both time, system resources, as well as um, information retrieval performance metrics like precision uh, and recall as well. Um, so uh, to answer your question, I don't think there's any performance hit from the Onyx runtime, but from the Java side, I'm, I'm not entirely sure yet. Yes. So uh, you mentioned that the words are looked up in the tabular file. And from what I know, there are like other models that, for example, take uh, like parts of words as input instead of the whole word, right? Or single letters, but that's less popular. So how difficult would, be, would it be to support these kind of models? Or, like you would have to port tokenizer to C, like how would this work? So the, the vocab file, um, here, and I think I skipped, a, uh, I took a slide out earlier. It uses the word piece tokenizer. So in that vocab file, it will be pieces of words and not whole words. Um, so when um, OpenNLP does the tokenization um, and, and when it takes a token and then asks the vocab file for its identifier, it will first tokenize it using word piece. And so it might get back just you know, a piece of a word, pound, pound, signed, and, and, and get that back instead. Okay, so it's already supported. Yes, it is. But in, like, you know, in a case, you have to implement the tokenizer in OpenLLP to be able to use it, right? Like it's not the word piece tokenizer is there. Yeah, of course. It was introduced in 2.0. But if you need a different tokenizer, yes, you, you would have to implement it. All right, I have stickers. If anybody wants a sticker, I totally like it. Yes? I know you said, um, or I guess you talked about like the top down with me and the long distance. Do you have any thoughts on how you can implement that in the Python system? Because I know that you might fit into some of the open uh, NLP stuff going on. The Go programming language? Um, not really. Um, I've personally just kind of been focused on the Java side of it. Um, it would be great to explore um, if, 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 if there's an interest there. Um, nothing says that Apache OpenNLP has to stay Java. And if there's a community interest um, to bring other languages in, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Sure. All right. Thank you.